PMC introduced their line of road machine back in 2016, replacing the old GF series. At the time of the introduction, the marketing line was one bike collection. Now, since then, the bike has gone through a redesign and now it's in its second generation. And today in this episode, I take you through what I like, what I don't like about my road machine. Stay tuned and find out. How are you? This is your surely diabetic cycling, aka DC, not to be confused with the other very famous MMA fighter, DC. Through this year, I am going to share with you a bunch of different bike reviews starting with this episode. And, um, you know, typically I rotate anywhere from two to three road bikes, depending on how dice rolls. And when it gets really crazy, there is a fourth bike in the uh, rotation. Now, as far as you know, credentials are concerned, I am by no means a ex-pro racer, none of that, not even close. I'm not a uh, review editor at a very famous bicycle magazine or anything of that nature. So there is actually no credential. But what I share with you is just my personal opinions based on years and years of road cycling. And I've been through a dozen, two dozen bikes throughout the years and everything I bring to you is sponsored by and brought to you by just me myself and I only it has not been paid for I don't have any affiliate links I gain nothing from this other than just sharing with you of course this channel may get monetized at some point then maybe I get a couple cents here and there but I have no other ulterior motive I'm not a shop owner I'm not pushing any product down your throat just want to share with you what I think about a particular bike, particular item, so that when you are shopping for coincidentally the same thing, you have a somewhat unbiased opinion from a guy next door that you may run into on a Saturday group ride. So before I go into the road machine review, let me just share with you that, um, you know, the opinions that I'm going to share with you are based on, like, like mentioned earlier, a bunch of the bikes that I had in the past. So whenever I talk about certain, you know, feel features and whatever, I will be somewhat basing my opinions on that. So that would include, I've had a uh, giant TCR, I've had a uh, couple different giant Defies, couple different specialized LAs, Canyon Ultimate C FSLX. I had a couple different iterations of light speed, titanium bikes. I had uh, DeRosa, I also rode a Cervelo S3 for a while, also had a couple different Cannondale Evos, uh, lower grade as well as uh, super high end high mod, and uh, what else did I have? I also rode a bunch of Focus with the various different drivetrains, various different uh, wheels, so I'm not just sharing with you based on just you know limited experience like i mentioned earlier i don't have any professional experience in reviewing bikes but 
when I come to you with the thoughts and opinions, at least I'm basing on all these bikes that I've had pleasure of owning and riding in the past. So that would be somewhat of a baseline where all my thoughts and opinions would be based on. So now let's talk about BMC. So the BMC company has mainly, for us roadies, mainly, of course they have like the Trek bikes as well as like a tri bikes, but um, mainly for the roadies they have the Team Machine, which is a lightweight all around race model. Then there's a Time Machine, which is their aero bike. Then there's the Road Machine, which is geared towards the endurance riding and somewhat of a more comfortable bike you know designed more for long day on the saddle kind of a bike and then each of those models like the road machine will be will come in two different flavors 01 and 02 so 01 would be the lighter higher end configuration so it would have all the you know the integration up at the front end with the very proprietary looking stem to hide all the cables uh like under the proprietary bar and everything. Also, the carbon frame itself and the fork would be made with the lighter carbon composite so that it weighs a lot less. Then there is the O2 version of the bikes, which would be somewhat a little bit heavier, but you also get, um, you, you also end up saving a couple dollars in your uh, wallet as well. Now, O2 version also comes with a one and two and three, depending on your configuration. So the one that I'm talking about today would be O2-3. So in its stock configuration would have hydraulic Shimano 105 components with Shimano R010 wheels. However, I'm not a huge fan of Shimano, which I'll share with you later. It's not a knock on Shimano. Um, I'll go into that a little bit later on in this episode. But um, so it took a little bit of time to put on my SRAM parts that I had onto this bike. Therefore, I ended up riding the stock configuration for about 350 miles. So some of the thoughts and opinions that I'll share with you will be based on that as well as the current build that I've done, which is with the SRAM access ETAP group set. So before I go into my current build, I'll touch a little bit based on the stock configuration because most of you that's gonna pick up the bike from dealer would uh, be getting this particular configuration. Now, if you get the Road Machine 022, then you get the Ultegra. And if you get the 021, I believe you get the DI2 version of Ultegra. See the 023, which is what I, uh, ended up getting has the hydraulic disc version of 105 and now I haven't ridden a Shimano drivetrain in over 10 years um, again I'll share with you later on why that is so it's been a while since I've been on the Shimano and especially 105 and I'll share with you at least this the bike as a stock configuration weighed 20 pounds flat. Outside of the weight penalty, the 105 shifting performance and braking performance is nothing to scoff at. Of course, I've been reading reviews and seeing videos from like the guys over at GCN and Cycling Weekly and Peloton and you know what have you, seeing how solid 105 is and I've experienced that myself. So there is a zero issue with the 105 group set as your drivetrain. So long as you don't mind the weight penalty come, uh, that comes with the 105 versus higher brethren like the Ultegra or the Dura Ace version of it. So if the weight isn't that big of a concern to you, I don't see why you would have to bother with changing out the group set. So at that point, I would keep 105 shifters and the drivetrain and all that. And with the money that you save by not buying the two model or the one model or anything else, you save that money and you go get the much needed wheel upgrade, which is the better bang for your investment in my opinion. So now on to my build, the way I'm running it today. So. As I mentioned earlier, Shimano bits came off and everything was replaced with the SRAM Access group set. 
uh, with the Zip 303S wheels. So let me share with you why I built it that way. So even though there is nothing wrong with the Shimano 105 or Ultegra or anything, there are mainly two reasons why I have not written the Shimano drivetrain in over a dozen years at this point. Number one reason is I have this mental block where I feel that it's not intuitive for me to work the shifters on the Shimano levers. So the brake lever moving side to side on Shimano levers, that I, I just have this huge mental block where that does not come to me as an intuitive operation. So that's very confusing to me and it, it, it's my thick head that just can't get my head wrapped around it and that's one of the reasons why I haven't written a Shimano where also on my right shifter if I go inward that makes the gearing easier right but on the left lever if I go inward that makes gearing harder where the chain ring moves to the bigger ring so that's very confusing to me and it to me that's not consistent so that's very that's one of the main reasons why I have a problem with the Shimano way of uh, shifting of course there are billions of other people Shimano is number one de facto standard in bike drivetrain so um, there are billions of people that find this no problem but I do so um, that's one of the problems. of course I understand with DI2 you have a flexibility of programming differently but I haven't really gone uh, explore that option second reason why I shy away from Shimano situation is the way the hoods are shaped it's a thick and it seems bulky to me whereas the SRAM that I've been riding for last 12 years whatever the whatever number of years it feels better in my hands I do have a smaller hands than most and I just find that more comfortable and that's why I built with the Shimano, uh, I've built with the SRAM and with the Access I also get 12 speeds and the reason why that's important typically with the 11 speed I would run 50, 34 compact cranks up at the front and I would run 11, 32 in the back that's because I don't have the huge strength to keep up with the other guys. I'm not a climber, I'm not a sprinter, I'm just sort of in the middle in the group ride. I'm not the first guy that's going to arrive at the top of the local climb. I'm also not the first guy that's going to hit the next uh, stop sign on a group bunch sprint. So I just keep it at that combination to have it make it possible for me to climb up something that's 24 percent gradient without really killing myself but with the advancement in the drivetrain technology and SRAM's uh, 12 speed access set available what is possible is to run one to one ratio so on my front right now i'm running 46 33 in the back i'm running 10 33 cassette meaning i can run one to one 33 to 33 so when it when it's like deadly steep i am able to climb that up without really killing myself of course this is still hard but at least i'm taking advantage of technology to get me up there so now my shifters, the, both the derailleurs are SRAM Access Force group set in order to save uh, cost. And I've uh, chosen to go with the red crank set and red cassette. And that's because the weight difference between the red group set and the force group set. Now force shifts and brakes just as good as red. So again, just like between Dura Ace and Ultegra, basically you're just paying more for the red group set because of the weight. And when you look at red group set weight versus force group set on SRAM access difference, more than half of the difference comes from crank set and the cassette combination. So by opting to go with the crank set and the cassette being red basically I'm almost negating all bulk of that weight difference while saving money by choosing force on my derailleurs and the shifter levers. In terms of the wheels 
Now, I've been running tubeless wheels for, what, six, seven years now, and I run nothing but tubeless, largely for two reasons. One, as you could guess from the name of this channel, I'm diabetic, and I have a shaky hands situation. So when I'm trying to mount tires to wheel, it's very hard. So like when I do roads, when I have to roadside repair because of a puncture and whatever, it takes me incredibly long time. I have no grip strength on my fingers. It's very hard for me to roll the tire over to rim and just really, really difficult. So by going tubeless with the sealant inside, basically when other guys have 10 flats, I'm gonna have five flats. So I basically reduce the number of puncture flats out on the road by using technology available to me so that I do away with the less flats. Secondly, I run tubeless because I can run lower uh, PSI where it's a little bit plusher ride. Now, before the road machine, of course, I had like the Synapse, I had the Fies, so I've had experience riding more endurance geometry bike that's tuned for more or less, you know, endurance and comfort type of riding, but mainly my bikes are, have been the, you know, lightweight racy bikes like the Evo High Mods and Canyon Ultimates and uh, Focus Izako Max. So by going, by providing a little bit of a compliance from the wheel and tire combination, I am not dying out on a century ride. So that's the reason why I run tubeless and for this build I'm running 303S. I don't, I've had, I haven't had um, luxury of being able to run a Zip 303, any of the Zip Firecrest line of wheels, anything that's a high end like the NV wheels. But 303S is in a pretty sweet price to performance ratio. Also has the new hookless rim design, which means I run 60 PSI on my tires, on my Schwalbe Pro 1. So that's how I ended up, that's the, that's the thought process behind why I ended up with that. And with the 303S, with the Schwalbe Pro 1, I'm now running 28 millimeter tires, which is very wide, especially me coming from, I mean, I've been riding road bikes for, I don't know, three decades, four decades. I remember the days of 19 mil. I remember the days of 21 mils, 23. And most of the uh, last better part of 10 years, I've been running 25 mil, which was deemed as like super mega wide. But here I am running 28. Now, as far as in terms of ride quality, the variables are not the same, right? I'm running them on different bikes, different frames, different wheels. Therefore, I cannot tell you what, right now in this episode whether the 28 mil feels different because of the new width compared to my 25 mil. If I keep the variables consistent, for instance, the same BMC road machine, same 303S, wheel and then run the 25 mil and versus 28 mil then i may be able to tell you the difference that i feel out on the road but since that's not the case i will reserve my opinion what the 28 mils uh, feel like as since this video is more geared towards what i think about the bmc road machine now in terms of the road machine itself i will tell you this it is not as comfortable, even though the road machine is built for all day comfort, it's not as compliant as Giantify or Cannondale Synapse. I have not had uh, experience riding specialized S-Works uh, Roubaix, so I can't compare against that. But the road machine basically is providing you all the compliance via Ability to run wide tires and geometry. There is no gimmick in the stem on the front end to absorb shock. There is no gimmick on the backside rear triangle with some sort of insert or suspension that's going to eat up the road vibration. 
So I do feel a little bit more, the, the feedback from the road to the rider, I do feel more of that than compared to like the device and the synapse that I wrote in the past. Now that said, that is not all negative to me because I actually prefer bikes that are absolutely stiff, such as my Merck's um, Sanremo 72, uh, why 76, I forget the exact model number. And Focus Izalco was a very stiff bike and the Ultimate, um, Canyon Ultimate also had a very stiff front end and my DeRosa SK Pin and Farina was also very stiff at the front ends and same was with my Evo High Mod from Cannondale. So I love the stiff front end and that sort of a stiffness is very much present here on the road machine. The fork is just beefy. So in terms of the so going back to frame and the fork real quick. So the frame, I love the lines and the angles and the muscular look of the frame. And one of the reasons why I ended up uh, choosing this particular bike. And the fork, very beefy as mentioned earlier, very stiff, um, which I didn't think it would be as stiff on an endurance focused bike. The left side of the bike, the fork and the chainstay asymmetric to compensate for the additional force that's being applied by disc brake. Um, another bike that I'm going to show you later on, even though it's also same disc brake build, does not have asymmetric build, but you go look at other disc brake focused bikes designed engineered for disc brakes, such as the Pinarellos and even my 2016 Giant Defy had an asymmetric fork and the uh, chain stay to compensate for that uh, disc brake system. So in terms of that, the frame is a little heavy. Like I mentioned earlier, is a uh, version 02, meaning higher weight. I believe it weighs more than one kilo just by frame itself. So it's not a lightweight by any stretch of imagination. Um, the chain stays at 41 centimeter, but I believe the rake is where it's at that creates this, this um, 990 mil wheelbase, which when I'm riding, I could definitely feel the extra length. It definitely feels like I'm carrying a sedan over a sports car. So same 51 centimeter frame by other companies like racier geometry bikes that I've ridden in the past would have some maybe about two centimeters shorter wheelbase so it would have a little bit of a snappier feel whereas my road machine with the 51 centimeter frame 990 mil wheelbase it feels more like a porsche panamera than a porsche 911 if i want to use that analogy staying with the frame and fork so Obviously you get the seat post with the frame and it is a proprietary BMC seat post that has the shape of a pos you know, very popular cam tail. So the front end of the post has a curvature and then it has an immediate sharp cut at the end. Um, basically, if you look at the top down, it's gonna be like the capital letter D shape. And it's one of the things that I don't like about this bike where the seat post is very stiff. Doesn't, it doesn't feel like it gives me a lot of a compliance in terms of a uh, seat post flex. And because it is a um, uh, proprietary build, I can't just go out and buy 25.4 mil seat posts like uh, what Cannondale uses on their Synapse and give, try to give me more compliance on my butt by changing the seat post. So that is a negative if you ask me. And then um, from the B-rolls that I'm gonna roll, you would notice that I have my stem actually slammed. That's because the head tube is a little bit taller than what I would like. So I ended up uh, using um, with using my stem completely slammed and I'm using negative 17 degrees, also zero degree stem, basically going parallel to the ground to lower my uh, front end, my cockpit that much to um, work with the head tube uh, height, 
which is a slightly taller than what I would have liked. Of course, you may think, well, then why did you get a road machine over a team machine? But that's because I wanted something a little bit more uh, comfort oriented bike than all out racy posture. Because I, when I'm out on the century ride, which I do two dozen times a year, I don't, I, I'm getting older, so I'm opting a little bit more for comfort versus than just uh, discomfort for the sake of just being aero and whatever. I have found a happy medium on my road machine with this stem configuration, so no complaint from my side. So overall impression wise, I really like the bike. After all, that's why I bought it. Um, so good thing that I like the bike, otherwise I would have to find a way to sell it. So um, on long rides, it definitely feels comfortable. Not as comfortable as the uh, you know rival bikes, but to me, I don't find it harsh to complain about it. And the way the bike provides compliance via the ability to run wider tires with the lower pressure, um, if you incorporate tubeless tires, with a geometry that is just dialed in perfectly, if you ask me. So that, all of that make it a very pleasurable bike. And on long rides that I've taken it out on, I'm finding it um, just really joy to ride. Now that said, aforementioned, slightly longer wheelbase means um, even though that's part of the reason why the bike feels comfortable, you do feel that you are wheeling around something slightly longer. I can definitely feel that. And of course, with the O2 iteration of the frame, it means I'm also lugging a little bit of extra weight, probably somewhere around 250 grams just on frame alone when I'm uh, climbing. So like uh, this past weekend, I rode up Dante's View out in Death Valley. And if you're familiar with that climb, that's a 25 miles of nothing but climb, which I'll show you in my next episode. You're climbing 5,600 feet in 25 mile period. Average grade is only four and a half percent, but final three miles, you're dealing with 15%, 20%, type of uh, gradient and the extra weight definitely is noticeable. So it is not the lightest to bike and you definitely do feel the weight. As far as the bottom bracket and power transfer, absolutely no complaint at all. It picks up when you need it to pick up and it's very stiff at the bottom bracket area. So each stroke definitely translates to your uh, bike propelling. And um, out of the gun, accelerates with no problem especially also the bike what i am noticing is once you reach certain speed it will hold that speed very effortlessly so that is a big plus so like i mentioned earlier it feels more like a porsche panamera than a mini cooper so it may not be as agile with that wheelbase and the weight and everything but once you get it rolling it will hold it steady, it will transfer all the power out of your legs, just absolutely a great ride altogether. So let's uh, talk about the, the pros of this bike. I love the sharp appearance of this bike. Has no garish logos, no overblown you know, logos and all the proprietary technology stickers all over the frame, nothing like that, nothing garish, very classy looking like mentioned earlier the geometry of the bike in my opinion is nailed perfectly which renders to great riding experience does not feel sluggish even though it has this somewhat of a long wheelbase doesn't feel sluggish with a stock configuration of a 105 the wheels are somewhat problematic but i didn't find it to be a problem Perhaps arguments could be made by others that it's not as comfy as the Defy or like the Synapse. However, on long rides, I don't find it uncomfortable at all. It's not punishing. It is very much of a pleasure to ride. Let's talk about what I don't care for, what I don't like about this bike. So as mentioned earlier, the bike was stripped off of a Shimano bit to put on my SRAM access part. In the process, what we found out was the rear derailleur hanger, rear mech hanger, 
isn't compatible between Shimano and SRAM Access. And I guess it's a somewhat of a common thing nowadays on top of all this bottom bracket standards that differ from company to company. I mean, how many bottom bracket standards do we have nowadays? And I guess it's the same now with the SRAM Access and Shimano Direct Mounts and everything else. I had to wait, I mean, it's a $30 part, which I had to wait for forever to get it in from Switzerland and put it on so that I could hang my rear mag and all the screws and everything else. So that is that was a big negative to me, how it deviates and has this proprietary um, hanger that was so hard to get. Now earlier I did say how stiff the bike was and I considered that to be a positive. Now this that same front end, although it's stiff, although it gives me plenty of feedback from the road, it is, I find it also somewhat jittery and somewhat a lot of chatter from the front end. I don't feel as grounded, so that is uh, something of a negative if you ask me. Obviously not the lightest to bike out of the box, therefore you do have a lot of weight that you are carrying up on a climb if you live in mountainous area. So that's a negative depending on how you view that particular topic. Now with the stock configuration on the O2 version of this bike, there is no integration at the front end, meaning all the cables are going to show and the two cables that go down on the down tube, they bow out pretty wide. Um, now by going SRAM access, that means I got rid of one cable that go down that way, which is my rear mech, rear derailleur um, cable. So now I only have one cable hanging out and it's still somewhat wide and that is a negative because as you are out of the saddle pedaling, the cables that bow out as such will rub against your inner thigh on both ends. So in conclusion, while I personally would not put this bike as a all-out endurance Grand Fondo type of a bike, I would put this road machine somewhere between that comfort endurance class and all-out balls-out racing class type of bike. I think this road machine sits in the middle. While it lacks slightly on comfort and compliance, it also has enough racier feel where you're, I don't feel like I'm losing out against my buddies that are on their um, F12s and the team machines and whatever else. You could reduce weight by selectively upgrading different components and be competitive on climbs and such while you take, up the, take advantage of the fantastic geometry of this frame where it gives you all that comfort derived from engineer the geometry and the way the, the, the carbon layup has been made to make up the frame. So outside of the little nitpicks that I've done earlier on negatives and cons, really I'm finding it hard to fault as an overall bike. It's on pure joy on all day century rides and just it's not punishing at all and just a great bike to ride all day long so that's my take on bmc road machine 02 i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will bring you some more bike reviews as the year goes along i do have a couple more bikes planned for this year uh, that will be mine and then I uh, may feature some other bikes from other folks as well. So I hope to see you more often. So if you like this kind of uh, content, please do me a favor and support the channel by clicking on subscribe, hit the like button. Definitely do leave a comment if you have any questions and what have you. You've been great. Be safe out there, safe pedaling, keep riding, and I'll see you next time. Diabetic Cycling, aka DC, out. Take care.